Good morning, folks. Don't forget, viewers in the U.S., Canada, and Mexico will have visibility of the solar eclipse tomorrow, October 23rd. It will begin mid to late afternoon, depending on where you live, but almost everyone in North America will get to see something. Mobile Observatory Project is in Tennessee and will be in Nashville tomorrow. Hopefully, we'll get some good shots with the telescope. So for days, we've been eyeing this sunspot group. It began firing M flares before even cresting the limb into view. But last night, after about 24 hours of calmer conditions, we noticed a bipolar umbra. Both polarities, a central vorticity that we've seen create many quiet conditions in the past. In the evening news, we said that could be the cause of the depressed flaring yesterday, but that a decay of the bipolarity should result in some big flares. Few hours later, the central vorticity was gone. No more blue to be seen in there. The delta class remained very strongly and the flaring came back quickly. The quiet day yesterday was ended by two M flares overnight, the first of which hit M9 and almost broke into X class range. Good news is that there has not been much ejecta and that which has come out is mostly going south. However, this active region is turning into face earth and we'll need to monitor it closely. Let's shift from a flare watch to checking the coronal holes. In 211 angstroms, we see that the equatorial opening is now departing. Luckily, it seemed to only create unusual location rumbles in the six-pointer in Ecuador. Other solar events of note include big filaments coming in and a small filament release on the northeast quadrant of the Earth-facing disk. Solar wind speed peaked out yesterday morning, but the density charged back as the speed waned a bit. This has kept geomagnetic instability alive and is also beginning to break through the outer defenses. We've got plasma penetration into the Earth system and upper atmosphere as shown by the elevated readings on the Rio meter. Switching to storms, let's look back on Hurricane Anna, the daylight images and visible wavelengths. She never made landfall in Hawaii, but still caused some headaches and a solid cleanup effort. Speaking of tropical storms, Cyclone Hood Hood at India did more than lash the coastline and cause flooding. When it got through the Himalayas, it dumped a major blizzard, seen in the before and after here. This is from the last few days in Jordan. Some of the worst flooding these areas have seen in decades. Anything that was on the road is not there anymore. Mud content adds some force to the rushing waters as well. To start the weather watches today, we begin at the east coast of Brazil where a convergence is drawn from a low all the way south of Africa. That's nuts. Flood watch tonight at the coastline. Next, we've pointed out the Gulf of Mexico development for a few days and while it has no name as of the early morning hours, it has indeed been identified as intensifying. It is going to shift to the east, but is already tossing its moisture north and hitting Florida. This is the scene in West Palm. Got at least one more day of that. Let's do North America backwards today. We already saw the Florida storm maker, but now note that we have got watches in the far northeast, then rain and storms coming to the central states all the way north of the border, and also a flash flood watch out west, also cresting up into Canada. Wind map tells all. That's got nor'easter written all over it up there. Warm air shifts up to meet cooler air wrapping around the low. Then we shift to the heat and moisture racing up through the central states, set to drop tonight. And finally, the northwest is taking the flow from that stuck low in the Alaska bend of the North Pacific. Convergence drawing right down into the southwest corner of Australia. We also have a three-way convergence in southeastern Australia. You see them all heading in there. That's our primary storm zones down under this evening. Last but not least, we have a low that will bring rain to Iceland, but more relevant is the convergence in Central Europe. Lots of moisture shooting atop the land and aided by a low driving the winds back east of Italy. The rain will be widespread, but the thunderstorms stick to the convergence's heat and moisture. Got some shots of our star to close. Solar watch continues. It's 6.40 a.m. Eastern Time, 5.40 a.m. Central Time. That's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.